a friend on the journey. Do you have many friends that you would consider really intimate, close connections on your journey? I bet you have friends that are all on the spectrum, right? Where there are some where it's woven like this, you get each other, you see each other. And then others, there are moments of meeting. And then others, there is a common love and understanding all the way to the spectrum of friends that maybe you don't get each other, but you simply enjoy each other. What do you think about having a mystic friend that doesn't live physically right now as someone who can walk with you on your own journey? When I was 19, I had begun to experience hours and hours of being completely absorbed into presence into the divine. It was beautiful, all-encompassing, overwhelming. In fact, I couldn't get away from it. It was being pursued by God. It was hot and it was heavy and it was incredibly delicious. And I had experienced many moments like this in my life, but they were moments. Now what happened in my late teens was it seemed like moment after moment after moment was becoming a long string of experiences of marriage with God. And I looked for friends on the journey. I looked for physical friends, but most didn't understand what I was talking about. And I felt young and I felt so humbled by the experiences that I figured nobody would believe what's actually happening. Visions were happening, miracles were happening, but what was most impactful was the deep, silence and union that were happening within me. I kept looking for a spiritual director. That would be someone who has experience in these realms and also formal training with being a mentor and a guide. And I was meeting with misunderstanding across the board. Well, I finally got an appointment with a priest who lived about an hour away from me who was renowned as a contemplative. And I went to visit him. And we sat and we began to talk and I went out on a limb. I started to share my experiences and I did it by sharing one specific. There was a mission chapel that I used to walk into. It would actually be any chapel, but this one was one I went to almost every day. And the moment I would walk through the door, I would experience the top of my head opening like a huge whoa. And then it was a felt sense, so I'm trying to give words to it, rush of white light would rush through my whole body and I would swoon. I couldn't stay standing. And from it, I would be taken into these very deep states. So I decided to share this with him. <laughs> I, I ended my story and he looked at me and he said, now, are you sure you're not falling asleep? And I was humbled enough. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding. I said, I've never felt so alive in my life. It was the exact opposite. But he was the best gift I could have received because with that, I gave up on finding a friend physically here on my journey. And within a week, one of my housemates put within my own hands the autobiography of St. Teresa of Avila. I don't even think I really knew about her. Even though I was baptized in a Carmelite church, I was really little when I was baptized. <laughs> and I began to read this book and weep. And I sat on the couch and everything she was sharing was exactly what I was sharing. She became my friend. And had I found a friend that was physical, I might not have discovered her. She is an incredible friend because she's not only very gifted and very prolific, but she's very approachable. She models and shows that being in this world is sometimes not so fun. She was traveling in a carriage from one monastery to another one time, and I'm paraphrasing it. I might not have the details just right, but the carriage got stuck in the mud and tipped over. And she looked up and she looked up to, to the sky and she said, God, she said, if this is how you treat your friends, it's no wonder you have so few of them. Maybe you've heard that quote. Maybe you haven't. 
but she is real and she's worthy of your friendship. And she poses the question just by who she is. What are your friends? And are they friends that really support your journey? She was very particular about choosing friendships that would be mutually uplifting. She counsels that we need to be detached enough to let spirituality and true faith be the basis of all our friendships. And in this, you'll find a friend in her on the journey. So if you want to grow in friendship with her, I'm offering a five week online course starting in just a couple weeks. And in it, we'll go into her writings, her poetry, we'll meditate, we'll have webinars, we'll go into her culture, her history. You'll have videos you can watch on your own, your own timing and schedule. And you and I can grow closer in this friend of Teresa F. Avila.